Hello students, today we are going to start with the history chapter of class 7th. Okay, so now in front of you, you can see a picture of a temple over here. Can you imagine uh, which part of India you could find such temples? Hmm, you're right, South India. And can you think of any one kingdom in the South India which was considered as the most powerful kingdom of South India? Hmm, right, it's the Cholas. Okay, and you can also think of the other kingdoms which were there in the South India. So now, can you imagine which chapter we're going to start today? Think on the lines. Yes, today we're going to start with history chapter 2, New Kings and Kingdom where we are going to learn about the meaning of the medieval period, the important kingdoms of the medieval period, Chapatiyat Shragar, and about the Chola dynasty. And in this lecture, we are going to talk about the meaning of the medieval period and little about its uh, coming up of the new dynasties. Okay, so let's talk about the meaning of the medieval period. So the medieval India refers to a long period of the history of the Indian subcontinent between the ancient period and the modern period. So it is lying in between ancient and modern period. The early medieval period which lasted from 6th to 13th century was and the late medieval was from 13th to 16th century ending with the start of the Mughal Empire in 1526, right? So we can see as the Mughal Empire had declined, these new kingdoms had started coming up. Now, Chola dynasty, Rashtrakuta dynasty, Gurjara Pratihara, Chahamanas, they were some of the important kingdoms that came up during the medieval period in India. Okay, said so. Now, you can see that this is the important dynasties of the medieval India. Karnal over here, the Chandelas in the central India, you can say just near Uttar Pradesh, the Parmaras, Rashtrakutas in the Deccan, very powerful rulers over here, Kalinga near Oressa, Palas near West Bengal, okay, Cholas coming down to the Deccan plateau, the southern India. Cholas over here, Cheras and Pandyas. So these were basic key uh, dynasties which flourished during the medieval period in the Indian continent. Okay, now what were the reasons for the emerging of the new dynasty in India during this period? Because by the 7th century what happened was that there were big landlords or the warrior chiefs in different regions okay so you can imagine they had a lot of power with them and the existing kings often acknowledged them as the subordinates or the samantas okay so these big landlords they were called as the samantas because they had a lot of power in their hand so the king actually also he, he also gave them a lot of independence over there Right. Now, as the Samantas gained the power and the wealth, they declared themselves to be Maha Samanta or Maha Mandaleshwara, which means the great lord of a circle or a region. Right? What happens when you keep on getting power in your hand? You will think that you are the best over there. And that is what happened to these Samantas. They were warriors or they were big landlords in the beginning. They got more power and they became Samantas and they called themselves as Maha Samanta then. Okay, so you can see the steps that they are going ahead in life. Sometimes they asserted their independence from their overlords. That is, they fought with their overlords and they got complete independence from them. And they started ruling on their own. And one such instance was that of the Rashtrakutas in the Deccan. Let's look at the map again. You can see Rashtrakutas over here in the Deccan. So they were powerful warriors and they got their independence from their overlord and they started ruling over the Deccan plateau. Initially, they were subordinate to the Chalukyas of Karnataka. In the 8th century, Danti Durga, a Rashtrakuta chief, he overthrew the Chalukya overlord. Okay, So first, they were Rashtrakutas were under the Chalukyas but then in the mid-8th century, Danti Durga was there and uh, 
he had overthrown the chalukya overlord also and they started ruling over there on their own right so this is how we have the mind map over there before that let's just take the role of the samantas um okay so the samantas you can see over here how they were the ones who were the ones who were going to give the gifts to the kings and the overlords right and they used to come to their courts and provide them military support right now what happened is that something uh, we have to talk about danti durga over here now let's recall danti durga was a Rash, uh, had overthrown the rashtrakuta chief right he was a rashtrakuta chief who had overthrown the chalukya overlord and then you have to remember this that he had performed a ritual which was called as the hiranya garbha which means a golden womb so now when this ritual was performed with the help of the brahmanas it was thought to lead to the rebirth of the sacrificer as a kshatriya even if he was not one by birth so basically this rashtrakuta chief danti durga he was not a warrior class okay but he did this uh, ritual which was called as the hiranyagarbha and he came out to be a kshatriya okay now in other cases men from various enterprising families they used their military skills to carve out their kingdoms because everybody was fighting and they wanted to take over their overlords and they wanted to become the ruler themselves and you have various other instances for example you have the gujara pratihara hari chandra uh, then there was kadamba they had given up their uh, traditions and they had taken up arms to establish the kingdoms in karnataka and rajasthan areas right so this is a way in which the samantas they were gaining power becoming maha samantas right and they were getting higher titles and they started ruling on their own now to summarize the topic i would bring forward to you a mind map right this is the way in which you also can make your own mind maps right see this is samanta in middle and where you can see the various role that the samanta played okay they were the big landlords they used to provide the military aid then they used to attend the royal court of the king they had got the titles later on as maha samanta maha mandaleshwara they used to they had started administering their own region over there they had overthrown the weak kings over there right and they had given the gifts to the king that is what they used to do earlier right then we have the examples of rashtrakutas who were subordinate to the chalukyas and danti durga came who had overthrown the chalukya king and he performed a ritual called hiranya garbha by which he became a kshatriya right and on the other hand we have the examples of kadambara and gurjara pratihara who used the military skills to carve out their own kingdoms so i hope you have able to understand the concept thank you so much